Hey everyone, Donovan Brown here. Well, not really. Actually, I'm an Azure custom neural voice trained to sound like Donovan Brown. If you would like to learn more, be sure to leave a comment below. This is a companion to the blog series, Web3 Meets DevOps on Medium, linked in the description below. In this video, we will cover part two, deploying contracts. Let's go. Good morning, everyone. No, let's try that again. Good morning, everyone. Oh, perfect. In the previous video of this series, Web3 Meets DevOps, compiling and testing, I set up the front-end and Solidity contracts with Truffle and covered compiling and testing. In this video, I will deploy the smart contracts and show you how to deploy them without requiring the front-end to be recompiled. I created a new branch named blog slash part two for this step. As I mentioned in the previous video of this series, deploying smart contracts is where this process gets tricky. To understand why, let's examine what happens when a contract gets deployed to a network. I use Ganache as a test network for local development and will use it in the dev environment of my pipeline. To start Ganache locally, I simply type Ganache in a new terminal. Before I could deploy to Ganache, I had to update the truffleconfig.js file by adding a development section under networks to point at my development network. With that section added, I ran truffle migrate to deploy my contracts. When a contract is deployed to a network, an address is assigned. This address is required for the front end to communicate with the contracts on chain. The address is written to the JSON file for the contract under the client slash SRC slash contracts folder created when the contracts are compiled. The JSON file has a network section that is populated with the address for each network where the contract has been deployed. Therefore, for the front end to communicate with the contract, it must be built after every deployment. This means the front end must be built in the dev, QA, and prod environments. Rebuilding code multiple times is a DevOps anti-pattern. The code should only be compiled once, with the resulting artifact being deployed to each environment unmodified. Any values that need to be adjusted for each environment must be externalized from the code and injected at runtime. Reviewing the app.js file in the client slash SRC folder, I can see the import of the JSON file on line 2. That information is used on line 20 to get the network details for the deployed contract, which includes the address. I changed this code to read the address from an external source. I still loaded the JSON file because it also contains the application binary interface, ABI, that does not change and is required to deploy the code. I want the code to work as it did originally for local development, but also work if the address is unable to be found in the JSON file. If the code fails to find the address in the JSON file, it makes a call to an external service for the address. Because I decided to use Azure Static Web Apps to host my frontend, I use the built-in Azure function support to host the service that returns the address of the contract. First, I updated the code to call the service. Everything up to, and including line 20, stayed the same. I added code before the creation of the contract instance to locate the address. First, I stored the value returned from the JSON file. Then, I tested the value to see if it was empty. If the address returned empty, a call would be made to the service, passing the network ID to return the address of the contract for that network. Finally, I constructed an instance of the contract using the ABI and the calculated address. The rest of the file remains the same as the original file. By externalizing the address, the front end is only built once. The code does not change as it moves from dev to QA and finally into prod. During the first stage of my pipeline, I will compile the contracts and front end and publish the resulting files as artifacts of my build. Those artifacts will be moved through the pipeline unmodified. With the contract deployment figured out, I committed all the changes. Then I merged my changes into the main branch. With the code in place, I can now write the service, hosted as an Azure function, which I will do in the next video of this series. Good morning, everyone. No, let's try that again. Good morning, everyone. Oh, perfect.